When people think of traveling, the assumption is that everything is amazing. It's the perfect remedy to the boring lives that the average human is assigned to live. New places, new people, the most Instagrammable locations you could imagine, endless banter and memories and so much more. And you might be thinking, well, what's wrong with any of that? Sounds pretty marvelous. And it is, but all of that stuff makes up about this much of the overall travel experience. You see, there's a pretty big catch to traveling, and it's the part that's quite often omitted from the social media side of things. So before you go and book your one-way ticket to ride off into endless sunsets and the most beautiful lifestyle one could imagine, let's talk about why that might not be the best idea. The only consistency is inconsistency. My traveling style is a little bit rough around the edges. I often found myself camping outdoors or staying with strangers. One day I found myself hitchhiking across the Mediterranean coast of Turkey. I had just spent a couple of weeks in this nice little beach town village, but it was time to move on. So I packed my bags and hit the tarmac as I had done many times before. So there I am standing under the side of the road trying to hitch a ride and it's no less than 35 degrees Celsius. Now I love spontaneity, which is why I like hitchhiking because you never know what's gonna happen. But oftentimes spontaneity puts you in situations that you would definitely rather not be in. So I managed to hitch a ride and I got about five kilometers. Now I was about a hundred kilometers from my destination at this point. So it wasn't exactly the most useful ride. So now I found myself on the side of a highway and there's nowhere really for me to go because it's a highway. The temperature hasn't dropped and needless to say, my complexion as an Irish man isn't exactly suited to such temperatures. So I got back to business and managed to flag down a lovely man who was driving pretty much to where I wanted to go. I think we drove around 100 kilometers together and then shortly after that, I ended up in my final destination for that evening. I'd heard that this location was really beautiful and would be filled with lovely traveler folk just like myself and that my loneliness would surely be satiated. So eventually I arrived and I kind of realized that I had made a bit of a mistake because the information that I got was quite dated and rather than being this haven for travelers, it was now overrun by higher end touristic establishments and freeloading people like myself that wanted to just enjoy nature sleeping under the stars the old fashioned way weren't quite welcome. They had actually made all of these things illegal. At this point, I started to get that usual feeling of dread where I'd contemplate my loneliness and the solutions that I could have to it. In a sense, traveling was a, an escape, but then I wanted to escape the traveling itself back to the thing that I previously escaped. I saw one guy in the distance. He had just come out of the water and I overheard him speak in English. And I thought to myself, I could sit here by myself for the evening, nod off and then wake up again with the same issue, feeling lonely and with, with no connection to to anybody around me or I can just go up to this guy and the people that he was with and see what happened so I went for the second option I went up to this guy and I said hey and we had a bit of a chat and so I said is it okay if I come and sit down with you and sure enough he said yes and now I was mingling with this group and that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship and also it opened up a lot of opportunity for this little stint of my journey Throughout that day, I was consistently surprised and often for the worst, but there were pockets of joy and wonderment that crept in every now and again when I had the courage to meet them. But sadly, whenever a connection like this was made, it was only a matter of time before pain would once again resume its grasp on me. Every day is a small death. In normal life, change doesn't happen very often. The average person goes through a sequence, a system of events and protocols from their youth to their old age. 12 years in school, it ends, we cry. Then you enter the workforce, you have a job. Three years later, you decide to move to a different company. It ends, you move on. The events that happen that hurt us, they don't really happen that often. In my experience of a, a normal life, we'll say, it's not as bumpy. I mean, there's the reason it is called the beaten path. It's smooth. Of course, there's dips and hills every now and again, but ultimately change isn't so drastic. When traveling, on the other hand, it's quite a dichotomy because it is bumpy. Every day there is a death. And if not every day, probably every few days or every week. For when I met my new friend on the beach, I was also setting myself up to lose that friend because 
Rarely do you travel together. And if you do, it's rarely forever. So my beautiful connection is fostered and cultivated, not only with the people I meet, but also with the places that I am. And then it comes time to go. A few days pass, a few weeks, whatever it may be, and it's time to move on. That in itself is a death, a death of the identity I was with this person, with this place. It's saying farewell to people that you've gone so deep with so fast to a place that has held you. And even though we've come through the unknown so many times to be where we are, wherever you are in life, it doesn't make the pain any less when we're whisked back into that same situation. And I remember so many times I would be just ready to leave a place, my bag on my back, <laughs> about to say goodbye to the people, not knowing where I was going next. And this feeling of dread and fear and loneliness would wash over me. And I would think to myself, can I keep doing this? Can I keep enduring this pain so frequently? And it's such a deep cut. And that's not what I expected from all of the beautiful photos I had seen from Instagram, the documentaries and films I had watched. None of that was evident. It just looked beautiful. It felt beautiful from my living room. But now I'm here and it's hot and the people that I've come to know and love are leaving or I'm leaving. I didn't sign up for these feelings. I didn't want to experience this so deeply and so frequently. I just wanted to play. <laughs> and so all of a sudden the emotions that I felt over a 20 year period prior to this, I've now experienced all of that and more in the space of two weeks. You see Michael, who I had met earlier, became a really good friend of mine. And I know more of him than I do people that I spent all of my schooling years with. In a sense, I was traveling to find something, but I also didn't realize that I was gonna lose a lot that I didn't even know I would gather. And even when I'm on the road, I still forget about the pain and then I remember it when it comes time to board a plane or you know, leave a place or say goodbye to someone. It's like a stab every time. And it's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that part. Nothing compares to the road. There's a phenomenon known as post trail depression. It's usually associated with through hiking when you're going on a long hiking adventure, but it's the same with backpacking or traveling or whatever you're doing. If you're going into a, a new way of living for a sustained amount of time, you're going to find it very difficult to revisit that normal, usual way of living afterwards. Because if you've lived every day greeting strangers with a smile, making new friends and going deeper than you ever had in your entire life prior to that. It can be very daunting to go back to a world where it seems like people don't really share the same interests as you. You can't really exercise your curiosity to the same degree, or at least it might seem that way. It's what drives so many people to continue traveling after a journey has ended. That's all well and good if, if you can afford and sustain that. But a lot of the time we run into the challenge where we need money and we don't have a way to make money. And so it's like we're always seeking the adventure, but we don't quite have the means to do that in a sustainable way. For the person that is just more interested in ongoing adventures, it's easier to do that, you know, in this pendulum swing on the traveler side of things. And often, we see the world as the normal stuff here, the regular way of life, and then the adventure way here. And I think so long as they're on the opposite end, and so long as we're living in one or the other, we're gonna run into issues because when we're living the traditional sense, we maybe lack that adventure and we lack the curiosity and we stagnate. Whereas if we're always on the road, we have the opposite, which is we're floating, we're constantly dysregulating the nervous system and causing ourselves a lot of pain. Returning from my journeys, I would find myself really struggling to be in this normal life. And so I would just run back to this life. But then inevitably there came the decline in resources and finances and I would end up back here. And so in my opinion, the biggest challenge and setback that one faces when they decide to travel is that they find themselves in this loop where they don't really cultivate autonomy of self or emotion because we're so dependent on our lifestyle determining how we feel and and we think that there's only one or the other but really it's the integration 
of the benefits of the normal life, which is stability and finance and what have you. And then integrating that with the traveling lifestyle. And for me, as someone who has spent some time traveling on an ongoing basis, I found the best thing for me to do to help navigate this. It came only after a lot of resistance and pain, but it was to embrace both because the truth is we can find that spontaneous nature of travel in normal life. And for me, what that looked like was how can I spontaneously make money without arriving at a normal nine to five job? Like what are some adventurous ways that I can make money from that? You know, utilizing that skill set, I then have finances to go on actual adventures that way. I'm not perpetually wandering and wondering where money is going to come from or when I'll have to inevitably return to the awful nature of the normal world. But instead I was finding adventure within the normal world. And then that integrated the two so that I could get the best of both. I had the spontaneity and I also had the groundedness that comes with knowing I can look after myself. I can generate revenue so that I can live the free life that I wish to. All too often I see the traveling spirit compartmentalize travel only to that one realm, to the realm of like, it's got to be out in a hot country on a beach. But what's even better is to do that in a way that you're not dependent on that for your joy because you found adventure in any context. You don't need to be hiking in valleys or swimming in caves in order to have a fun experience on this earth. It's a mindset and it's not fixed to a specific location. In a sense, we travel to find adventure only to realize that there's no adventure without you in the first place. And with that in mind, adventure isn't something to be sought, rather something to be realized in this moment, wherever, however, whenever. <laughs>